Cola crap, crap, crap. It's a bunch of crap. It's a bunch of crap. But everyone always wants to bring this up after I've beaten them to death on a comment section after 150 comments will eventually come down to, well, we got this E. coli thing that proves evolution. We're going to take a look at this. This is the E. coli evolution experiment. They began in the 80s. And uh, because it could use uh, uh, citrate when it wasn't supposed to be able to, that's got to be evolution, right? Well, let's take a look at what we got. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with this, we're going to get a little bit scientific, not too much, because, you know, I, what, it, what I've found is the problem. You go and you look at this, what's actually going on with it, is people that debunk this, they'll spend an, like an hour and a half explaining exactly what's going on and why this is not evolution. I'm going to be nice and simple here, okay? You got E. coli, and they did a test. They eat glucose, and they can eat citrate. But if there's oxygen in the environment, they call that aerobic. If there's an aerobic environment that has oxygen in it, the e the E. coli are programmed not to eat the citrate. Uh, they, they're only programmed to eat citrate if they're in an anaerobic environment, uh, meaning there's no oxygen around. So inside your body somewhere, you know, probably in your colon, because that's where E. coli like to be. There ain't no oxygen in there. So they'll eat citrate once they get in there. But if they're on uh, the countertop or the vegetables or whatever, they don't want to eat it. They want to eat glucose. So that's what we're talking about. So what they did is they, after, um, because they E. coli breeds every 20 minutes, they doubled in size. They're like perfect to, to use this test. So here we are 30 years later almost. Um, well, I think they they uh, figured it out 2010. It says here is when they this actually happened. So 22 years after they initially did it, um, yeah, 22 years after they initially did the experiment, they finally got some results saying, hey, look, they're starting to use the citrate when they're not supposed to be able to. Well, that's evolution for you right there. Now, here we are, point one. They could use the citrate anyway, right? It's not like they can eat rat poison now. It's not like they can do something freaking awesome. They could do it anyway, right? There isn't evolution there. I mean, they had a selector gene that uh, it's called a transporter. Um, another reason that evolution couldn't have happened. But you've got a, a specific set of proteins that act as transporters that will transport uh, glucose or whatever through the cell wall in these little microorganisms. And uh, it, it acts as a gatekeeper, right? So if it's glucose, it goes in. And if it's rat poison, it stays out because the proteins are smart like that, right? Well, in this case, the proteins will take in citrate or glucose, either one. It doesn't really matter, okay? It's only in the oxygenated environment that it decides it doesn't want the citrate. So eventually, after 22 years and probably, oh, I think it was they, they, it was 31,500 generations, I think is what it says when you, when you go in here. So after 31,500 generations of E. coli, they said, hey, it can, it can use citrate now when it's in its anaerobic environment or its aerobic environment, excuse me, with oxygen. That's got to be evolution because it's its food, right? Um, you put it in a beaker with glucose and citrate, which is a food-rich environment, right? Um, if there's oxygen around there, though, it'll leave the citrate alone and they'll just die off once the glucose is gone. Well, after a while, they didn't just die off. When, after a while, they started eating the citrate. Well... It only took uh, 31,500 generations for it to be able to do something that it could already do. Wow, that's got to be evolution. Um, now, here is what they find out that actually happened and why they really don't talk about this experiment anymore. Is the little transport gene that I was talking about that is the gatekeeper that lets things in and out of the cell? See, it already knew what citrate was. It just lost the specificity, specificity, fatata tata. It just lost the ability to regulate when it was going to let it inside the cell. It mutated and it broke. And they say that this is a, a, a fabulous thing for evolution. Now hold on a minute. Now you're 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 you you put the E. coli in a beaker with two different kinds of food. And, and now it can eat both types of food, and now you, you call that evolution. 
Well, let's take the E. coli out in the beaker and we'll see how well them frickin' uh, transporter cells work when they're not swimming around in food, okay? What else are they going to let into the cell? You know, I mean, sickle cell anemia. Oh, that's a brilliant mutation. Uh, you're, you're immune to malaria if you got sickle cell anemia. Well, yeah, that's great if you're in the Congo and your plane crashed and you're stuck in the jungle. It's great to have anemia. But under normal operating conditions, you don't want to have anemia. Anemia sucks, all right? It sucks. It's a disease. So due to a genetic mutation, the E. coli broke. They don't work anymore. They mutated enough where, uh, you know, they're, they don't care what they're eating, under what circumstances they are. Now, there is a reason that E. coli does not eat citrate when there's oxygen around. It, there is a reason for it. I don't personally know what it is, but the very fact that it does it tells you that there's a reason for it. Uh, that's how they were designed. And everything mutates. Everything, second law of thermodynamics, shit breaks down over time. The E. coli broke down. Um, they had a mutation in the gene, in the transporter gene. They, they know what it is. It made a copy of itself where it, when it shouldn't have. So there's no new information there. It's a copy of the gene that was already there, placed back to back, that allowed the citrate to go into the E. coli. Big frickin' deal. Um, as I said, you take that same E. coli with this new super Superman cape E. coli, and you put it out in the wild, I would bet it would die, like, instantly. Because it's letting all this crap into the cell that it's not supposed to let in. Um, this is not evidence for evolution. And you look at some of these different articles. This is, this article here is one that was from 2008 when they first, this is the first results came back. When they first started getting results, it was 2010 is when they finally figured out what generation it was and, and what's going on. But back down in here, look how happy they are, you know, about, uh, about what's going on. Um, Lenski's experiments, it, is also yet another poke in the eye for anti-evolutionists. See? See, look how much they're just, oh yeah, man, this is going to be so great. We're so, we're so going to prove this evolution thing. Uh, notes Jerry Coin, Coiny or whatever, an evolutionary biologist at University of Chicago. The thing I like most is that it says you can get these complex traits. Oh, you can get these complex, what's, what's complex? You got E. coli eating citrate. They could already do that. That's complex, huh? It says you can get these complex traits by evolving a combination of unlikely events. Yeah, it's pretty unlikely in the wild that an E. coli is going to sit in a beaker full of food. Uh, that's, I'll admit, that's totally unlikely. He says, that's just what creationists say can't happen. Durr! Yeah, that's exactly what creationists say can't happen, because it can happen! Uh, so this is ridiculous. Please stop freaking quoting the E. coli experiment. This is retarded, okay? This is animal husbandry for bacteria, okay? Bacteria could already use citrate. Big deal. Uh, make bacteria eat rat poison and make them evolve out of that. Or turn a bacteria into a fish. Do something. You're going to say that, oh, well, it can, it can eat this food that normally it wouldn't. It's not so much of a picky eater anymore. Well, great. Put it in the wild. See what happens. See how well natural selection works out. Um, so this is a non-story. This is nothing. And now you notice now we're in 2014. This only comes up every so often because it's kind of the bottom of the barrel for evolutionists now because they know it isn't any evolution going on there. It's a freaking mutation. It's, n it's no different between this and sickle cell anemia protecting you from uh, uh, malaria. There is no difference. It's a, it's a negative thing that, hey, if you're swimming around in nothing but food, it's great. But if you're not swimming around in food and you're not, uh, your plane didn't crash in a jungle in South America, you know, these things, they, they, they're not good. They're not good. Um, this research is great research, though. I mean, I, it's interesting the kind of things that happen. You can really study, uh, especially mutation and things like that, uh, doing E. coli. I think it's a great experiment. But let's not um, pull things and extrapolate things out of this type of uh, experimentation that is not happening, okay? We're not evolving here. We're mutating things and getting them to do strange things. 
And it's interesting. Um, it's a great microbiology experiment, but you're not, you ain't going to prove evolution with this. And it, it is no proof. Nada. Nothing. So please stop quoting this crap. All right. All I'm, I'm making this video because I hear this so often that I could just copy and paste the link now. Uh, I don't have to waste my time typing. I'm getting carpal tunnel from all you people. Anyways, that's about all I got. I'm out of here.